Thanks, Katie. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? It's, uh, it's awesome to be here, man, be a part of this competition. This is actually my first time performing at Boca as well. Um, I've been trying to actually forget that this was even a competition, just because uh, I didn't want to get too caught up in the whole competitive aspect of it and end up forgetting the acceptance speech that I already wrote. <laughs> it's actually... Uh, competitions are a little bit weird for me though, because uh, when I was growing up, my dad was a really competitive guy. He uh, he played uh, games, you know, like board games, video games, sports and stuff with me and my younger brother a lot. And it was fun, but uh, you know, he, he took it too far and he'd get all caught up in, in winning and wanting to come out on top all the time. So uh, it didn't matter what we played and he didn't care that, that we were just kids. Like dad had always beat me and my little brother whenever we won. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was actually, I was in a fight at a strip club once, uh, it was weird for me because like, I'm, I'm not a fighter, you know, I've been in like three fights in my life, but uh, you know, I got in a fight at a strip club and you know, it's out of character for me, um, but in my defense, I happened to be really drunk and uh, she tried to overcharge me for the lap dance. <laughs> I find it funny when, uh, when people get like concerned about their ability to hold on to a bar of soap when they find out they're going to prison. Because <laughs> it's just like, really think that makes a difference? Whether you can hold on to the soap or not? Like, I think that like the biggest, toughest guys in jail are just standing around like waiting for some fresh meat to walk in. And then you stroll in like cradling your bar of soap like as a newborn baby, scared out of your mind. You think that you think that's gonna repel those guys? <laughs> you think that they're just standing around like looking at you like, oh man, this guy's definitely not dropping this thing, so <laughs> better luck next time, I guess. Nope, doesn't matter. You can have your asshole locked up like Fort Knox, those guys are gonna find a way to get in. <laughs> You're better off practicing dropping the soap, you know, just surrender. You'll probably save yourself a couple of broken ribs. <laughs> Or just stay out of trouble. <laughs> I, uh, I hate guys who say uh, age is just a number. You guys ever hear that? You hear anybody say that? That's fucking, that's just a sad excuse that losers use to justify going out with really young girls. You know what I mean? Age is just a number, babe. Don't listen to them, babe. Age is just a number. Like, what do you mean, just a number? Like, when did numbers become insignificant? <laughs> Last time I checked, numbers were pretty important, you know? These guys just want to brush off numbers like they don't mean anything. It's literally like one of the first things you learn about as a human being. How to count numbers. And these guys just want to throw that all away for some underdeveloped titties. Because that's what it is. Like, numbers don't mean anything, you know, because I'm in love with a 16-year-old. Want to talk? No, these guys got the audacity to talk about numbers. I'll give you some numbers, man. While you're working your nine to five job and your 16 year old girlfriend is home on the couch smoking bong hits of your weed, and then you realize you're out $45? Surprise, asshole. Numbers. <laughs> Maybe you should consider them a little more carefully and uh, date somebody your own age. Because uh, I've been in a bit of a rut recently. Uh, you know, things are kind of rough financially, uh, romantic, like pretty much in every aspect of my life. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm a positive person, you know, I try to look at the bright sides of things. So uh, I, I realize that, you know, no matter how bad things might get for me, at least I don't share posts on Facebook for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing that people do, man. People share these posts for, you know, share this post and you'll come into a large sum of money and the next week or whatever. You realize how stupid you look sharing that shit? <laughs> My favorite ones are the, uh, the really far-fetched ones, you know, the ones that are like, share this post, you'll be met with great fortune. Ignore this post and your grandfather will die in a fire. <laughs> those, uh, <laughs> those posts really freak me out though, man, they do, because like, I'm reading it and I'm thinking, you know, on the slight chance that this is true, my grandfather has to die because I can't be seen sharing that kind of shit on Facebook. <laughs> I have to take one for the team, Gramps. <laughs> so, dumbest shit 
the dumbest shit goes viral on Facebook, man. I've seen a, I've seen a post recently that was like, date a guy who grows a beard because a guy who, can grow, who has the patience to grow a beard has the patience to deal with your shit. <laughs> and that's just completely wrong. Because first of all, who doesn't have the patience to grow a fucking beard? It li you literally do nothing. You do whatever you'd normally do in your day-to-day -day life and it grows on your fucking face for you. <laughs> Who doesn't have the patience for that? When was the last time you were hanging out with your friends just chilling out and one of them got all flustered and just stood up like, I can't take this anymore! And you're like, what's wrong? He's like, just, just grow in this beard, man. I can't do it. <laughs> patience to grow a beard. And if, if it did require as much patience to grow a beard as it did to deal with your bullshit, I'm willing to bet my beard still wouldn't nag me about finances and end up fucking my best friend. <laughs> That's all the time I have for you guys, man. It's been awesome. You guys have been great.